welcome back to Tony Northeastern and I hope you're all keeping safe and well and today starts the beginning of a new project it's been a while since I've tackled a baseboard not since uh, South Shields to be honest and uh, this is what we're going to start with now it's West Haven now then the length of this baseboard from the tunnels all the way to here just beyond on that um, buttress there, bridge buttress is roughly 8 foot and 6 inches which works out is about 2.6 meters and this little area here from the bridges here back to the tunnel is just over a meter so it's it's big enough to get a small station in um, this platform is redundant um, because on the platform on that side so we can actually see the trains coming into the station which will give a, a better viewpoint I think from a from a, a model railway perspective I think but uh, we shall see so, what's first? Well, first of all, we're going to consult the drawing and get rid of this single track and put in a passing loop along with a small siding. So we're going to have to take the track back as close to the tunnel entrance as possible to try and gain as much base as possible. those two points in. Bearing in mind we will be widening the baseboard by another 200 mil um, so we can put in a small dock area. Now I've always wanted a, a dock or a river or something like that um, for the layout and as you can see here we have already cut away for a river or a canal and uh, so there's a little bit of work to do there um, I've already made a start, I've already put this bridge in this was done a while back so I've just super glued those in onto a coffee stirring stick so that's that done um, at some point I'll have to work on the upper level continuing the wall round so, let's lift some track. So what I've just used there is a small cutting disc, uh, a very fine one which um, you normally get in your Dremel kits. So that's all I used for cutting through the track just then. So now I can start lifting the track from this point backwards and getting rid of this road. So as you can see, it's a bit of a messy job digging up this old road. There's the track that ran through it. And here's my dropper wires, where the dropper wires used to be. I won't be doing that uh, again. Uh, what I'll be doing, I'll be soldering the cables directly to the track. Because I have had issues, uh, especially after ballasting, that the continuity wasn't going through the rails. So. When I come to lay the track, I'll be desoldering these off of here and soldering the wires permanently live to the rails. So that's what I'll be doing there. As you can see, I've covered everything over to try and stop as much as this stuff um, going all over the layout that's been done behind there, which is high shields. Uh, 
I have now removed all that hardened polyfiller that was there to create a road going over the track so that's all gone and I've um, sealed where I've sanded it flat with some masonry paint mixed in with a little bit of PVA wood glue so hopefully that has treated that and if we turn the camera around you can see I've also been painting a dark brown underneath the bridges to represent dirt as it were so I've been fairly busy so once that's tried we can start laying some track uh, as you can see I've cut it further back here and then I'm going to put that little piece in there there and there so that's the trap plan for that which kind of matches the uh, drawing so that's what we're going to do next I'm going to wire up the points for the cables and then we can start pinning some track down however at this end of the track I'm having a little bit of an issue with this radius here it's too tight for uh, this curved radius as you can see by that 30 inch track set if I just drop that in there it means I've got to push this whole track section back at least an inch and a half to, to form that nice 30 inch radius uh, yeah so that's what I've been using for the layout is the 30 inch for the inside and a 36 inch for the outside as you can see there so I'd use these for the main line and I've used this one to come inside on the branch line so I just thought I'd uh, show you that yeah so by doing that pushing the track work back an inch I'm going to have to do the same on here which is the pull out drawer to the other half of the loft which is through there and here I've had a last minute thought uh, if I'm going to lift the track up here which I already have to move it over that inch and a half I might as well put a point in for further developments of the layout yes I'm going to be extending it even more because I have that space there which runs along the side of Stevenson's bank and round the loft hatch which is just here So yes, future planning, I'm going to extend again, but that's going to be next year probably. So this point here is causing the issue at the moment. This side is not a problem, it's more or less marked that out and ready to go, but putting this point in has trickier than that's what I thought it was going to be due to the tight radius so now we're ready to install the points on the layout and I use code 75 rail so this is a code 75 electrofrog point and this frog here has to be um, isolated um, to the rest via a switch motor so let me show you on the other side as you can see this cable here will go back to either a switch motor or a solenoid motor whatever you decide to throw your points with um, as you can see here we have a cable which runs across the two backs of the rails here which permanently energizes these rails here this rail this rail and this rail here up to that point there I just thought I'd show you that before I install it but before you do you've got to remove the two little tabs that are in there um, if I show you on this one which hasn't been removed yet 
you can see them there, the little tiny fine wires. Oh, there's one on the end of the screwdriver there, look. So that's what it is, you've got to remove them for doing the electrofog. So the middle of the baseboard, I've got a little problem here. Um, I've temporarily pinned in the curved radius point, um, but originally the layout here was designed for a single track and two will not fit onto that little piece of um, baseboard because two does not go into one. But I have come up with a plan to glue in a piece of plywood hopefully to widen the bridge by another 60 millimeters which will then give us the double width of track bed so we'll just glue that in there and then we'll add two pieces of 12mm MDF to widen the bridge and then we'll be able to run the two tracks in. So as you can see I've marked out how this is going to fit. So I'm going to have the narrow piece here and the wider piece here because here I'm hoping to bring a little bit of the platform onto the bridge just to try and extend the platform length but we'll see how that works out as we go further along building this station. I have now glued the plywood to that narrow bridge span so while that's dry we can concentrate further up the line which is here the point is in and the spur is ready to uh, attach but before we go any further we have to start um, putting in the track for this pull out draw here. Um, it's just held on with the soldered wires. Uh, remember earlier on in the video I so said we've got to move the whole track back about an inch. Uh, it'll be about an inch of this side and this side will be about an inch and a quarter so it helps to curve round where it will meet up eventually with this point here. So this piece of track will be reusable because it will still hopefully be the same length just by moving it back to there. So you can see it's not a lot. Uh, it's just a case of filling in these holes with the filler. So we have reconnected the track to that point and pinned down the track on the pull-out drawer and we've left a pretty reasonable gap in there which is round about uh, a millimetre and a half so that allows the drawer to pull out. Uh, a while back I did do a video on making this drawer. Um, so that's reinstated and the next thing was to pin down the curved track um, as you can see this is where it was before so we just moved it roughly about an inch back so we've done that and we've reconnected it to this point this curved radius the bridge was left overnight and that's gone rock hard so we can now connect the rails between the two points the curved radius here and the left hand turnouts just before it goes into the station so that's what we'll do now so we'll replace the tracks hopefully get them wired up and we can have some trains running through here Now, the platform itself is going to 
be similar shape to the one in South Shields because it's going to curve in and then curve back out again. So that's going to be interesting to see when we come to do that. So we shall crack on, get those two tracks in and rewire it all back up. So here we have a typical joint. Uh, as you can see I've roughly got one and a half millimeters there and if the sleepers are a little bit too further back than where you want them to be all you've got to do is just hold on to the tracks or the rails and then just pull the sleepers and then they slowly close up the gap here and here and same this end you just push the sleepers along and try and hold the rails in place and you get a neater um, finish towards your fish plates because uh, these sleepers will move so I just thought I'd uh, show you that so that's the what I'm calling the passing loop done just needs pinning down and then we just uh, have to connect up the platform side which is this one um, basically what I'll do now is I've got a set gap there of 36 millimeters where the pins are so if I do the same throughout I'll get them absolutely parallel all the way along until they come into this point here so 36 millimeters between tracks that's rail to rail so here we are underneath the baseboard and this is one of the droppers from the uh, left hand turnout. As you can see I've already fitted one using a splice connector. Basically this is what it is. It's just a two slots for two cables with a blade which pierces the cable. Uh, they're fairly um, reliable. I have had a couple in the past where I have to go around and give them another squeeze on this blade. So anyway, I'll show you how they fit. Just make sure you open them up enough before you start. You just clip it onto the buzz bar cable, like so, and then you feed the second cable which is my red one into the other and it just wait till it comes out the other side by a little bit like so and just using a pair of pliers just squeeze them together like that and that blade it goes right through both cables and just to be sure just give that one little tug and that's got it but just to make sure just make sure you um, squeeze it nice and tight to make sure you've got a good connection that's how simple it is no need for soldering and then just Clip the little latch on, close it off. Now that all the dropper wires are clipped in, it's just a case now of cleaning the track with a little bit of a lint free cloth just to make sure I get rid of any solder flux where I've soldered the cables directly to the track there. So I'm just rubbing all that off now. Just cleaning it all up, ready for the first train to run through. Now obviously the uh, point mortars are not wired up yet, so I can only run engines that have got pickups on the tenders. So it's not a bad weekend's work doing all this. Right the way around to this point here. Just need a low coat to test it now.
I wonder what these two are saying. So we're just waiting for the train now to go on the platform side because we've already done the loop side. So we're just going to check to make sure that that's all working too. have our canvas it's just a case of creating the station a little haven so until next time we shall leave you with these two guys enjoy your model railways now bye for now bye